In this video, we'll be looking at a picture of a frog using a leaf as an umbrella. Actually, we'll be looking at the differences between antibodies and antibiotics. These are two super, super similar looking words, and if you don't know the difference, it can be pretty damn confusing. Um, when I was doing the IB, and I was when I was learning in high school about these two, it was always a real mission to get to understand them. So hopefully I can make it really clear and concise in this video for you. So let's start with antibodies. So antibodies are made, if you've learned about the immune system, you know that they're made by your own body, hence antibodies. That's how I remember it. Antibodies are made by your body. So um, when you have a pathogen, and remember pathogen is any bacteria, anything that, that invaded your body and is trying to kill you, you know, if you've learned about immune system, that you have cells called lymphocytes. And they essentially find these pathogens, bind to their antigens. So these surface-shaped uh, surface, uh, things are called antigens. And they're basically like a sign saying, I'm bad. And so when your lymphocytes see that sign that's saying, I'm bad, they go towards it and bind to it and... and um, as soon as they bind to it, they differentiate or become a different kind of cell called uh, like a specialized kind of cell, either a memory cell or a plasma cell. If it becomes a plasma cell, it makes these things called antibodies and they look like this. See, they're kind of Y-shaped molecules and they make many, 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 many of them. And these antibodies are specific, keyword here, specific for this um, pathogen the one that they that this lymphocyte originally interacted with so it's not an antibody for this pathogen it's an antibody for this specific antigen that it bound to and so when this antibody comes into contact with that pathogen again like this type of pathogen this type of um, pathogen in the future say the same the same thing it's like his brother is floating around they're the same type of pathogen and when it comes into contact with this antigen I mean, with this antibody, this antibody will bind to it and kill it through various mechanisms, such as making them clump together so they're easy to detect by your macrophages that will eat them up, or they just destroy the cell wall, or they just bind to, um, or they bind to the antigen and destroy it through other mechanisms that I won't mention here. So that's what antibodies are. So let's get let's quickly look at the key points written down so you can understand it and visualize it more easily. So antibodies are made naturally by lymphocytes of your immune system. This is a lymphocyte, okay, um, against pathogens that invaded your body. So that's what I just explained here. They're made naturally by your body, antibody, okay. How about the next point? Antibodies can kill various types of pathogens. So what I mean by this is this process that I described here, it can happen with any type of pathogen. Um, in, in this case, I use bacteria as an example. This is a bacteria. But it can happen with any pathogen. Let's pretend this right here is a virus. It can happen with a virus. It can happen with um, a uh, parasite, any kind of pathogen, any kind of bad molecule that enters your body. It doesn't only need to be a pathogen. I mean, it doesn't only need to be a bacteria or only need to be a virus. It can be any of them. It can it Basically, it's very broad antibodies. They can take care of a broad range of pathogens. Let me, so if it binds to, for example, this, this virus here, instead of making antibodies for this one, it will make antibodies. These antibodies that are made are going to be specific for this type of virus. You understand? So let's look at the next point. Antibodies are specific, meant to kill a specific pathogen. So these two points are a bit confusing to, if you could look at them together. Here I mentioned they can kill various types. But here I mentioned they kill specific pathogens. What do I mean by this? By various types, I meant they can do viruses, bacteria, parasites, all of those by using this process. But by specific, I mean that each antibody made is only for a specific pathogen in that moment. So in this moment, this, this antibody was made only for this pathogen. In this moment, this antibody made they, this antibodies are only made for this pathogens. That's what I mean by specific. At one, at any moment, a specific antibody is only made for one type of pathogen. Okay. 
But any antibody, like if you bind, if this lymphocyte binds to another type of pathogen, it can make a antibody that can bind another type of pathogen. That's what I meant by these two. So I hope that makes sense. Antibodies bind to antigen and kill through various mechanisms. That's what I showed here. These antibodies, they bind to an antigen on the surface of this molecule like this and can kill it through various, various ways. Okay. So the antigen is bound to by an antibody. Okay. Let's go to the next one now. Antibiotics. I hope this all made sense. So a quick way here for you to remember the difference if you're, if you're having trouble is antibodies are made by the body, by your own body. Um, you don't need a doctor or anything like that. It's made by your own body. Antibiotics. Biotics to me sounds like robotic. And robotic I know is something made by a man, by a human. It's artificially made. Just like robots are made artificially by scientists, antibiotics are also made by a scientist um, and given to a doctor to give to you to help you fight off the infection. So, um, what do you think of, so now that you know the difference here, so what do you think of when you hear antibiotics? When I th hear the word antibiotics, I immediately think of medicine, okay, immediately. Um, why do we need medicine? So the reason why we would need antibiotics and why antibodies are not enough sometimes is because antibodies made sometimes aren't enough because maybe you're infected by a huge number of pathogens and the antibodies that your cells are making are um, are being made at too slow of a rate so you have too many pathogens for all your antibodies your antibodies are not enough in that case you need antibiotics which your doctor will give you and these antibiotics are artificially made by a scientist to or um, um, to help you fight this this bacteria that you were infected by so it kind of antibodies kind of support your antibodies if your antibodies are not enough. Okay, so here I have some three pictures. So as I go over the key points, I will use these to illustrate the key points. So first one should be easy. Antibiotics are made artificially in a lab, as I just mentioned. They are not made by your body. Or they can be made by other microorganisms. Okay, what do I mean by this point? This is a bit, bit of a confusing point. What I mean is, um, just because humans, just because your body can't make um, antibodies for a specific, can't make enough antibodies to fight off a specific bacteria, that doesn't mean other organisms can't do it. So basically scientists, they will find other organisms that can make um, these antibiotics that are um, useful at fighting off bacteria, and they pretty much extract that antibiotic and then give it to a human. So basically say this pathogen is being in, followed by this pathogen. So if it gets close, this kind of bacteria will make some some substances that will kill this that will kill this pathogen. Okay, and scientists will figure that out and be like, "Wow, what is that thing that this pathogen just made?" And they will extract that thing and give it to a human who is fighting that same kind of um, uh, pathogen. So say you are fighting a bacteria, and you are not making enough antibodies. The scientists will find another kind of microorganism that is fighting that same kind of substance, like find that same kind of pathogen, and use that toxins that that pathogen made and extract it and give it to you to help you fight that um, um, pathogen. Okay, that's what I mean by microorganisms. So they can either make it by themselves or get it from another organism who who makes it. So they essentially steal it from another organism. Okay, that's basically what the scientists are doing. This, I must agree, this is slightly a confusing point, but if you get it, that's great. So antibodies kill only bacteria, not viruses or other types of pathogens. So as I mentioned here, antibodies can be made against anything. Uh, bac ba viruses, bacteria, parasites, anything. Unlike this, unlike antibodies, antibiotics are only made for bacteria. They can only kill bacteria. They can't kill viruses, parasites, or anything like that. They're only for bacteria. That means when you're sick, you can't just assume um, that you should take antibiotics because antibiotics are only made for bacterial infections. So if you happen to be infected by a virus, that means that antibiotic will be useless because they do not work against viruses. Okay, so before you take antibiotics, make sure at the doctor that you're infected by a bacteria and not a virus. Otherwise, you're, it's useless. Okay, so now the next question will be why, why, why do antibiotics only work for bacteria, not viruses? So the reason is antibiotics act, they, they, they work by going into a prokaryotic cell, like a, um, so the bacteria, and they prevent that bacteria from making proteins that allow it to survive. 
It's basically preventing it from eating and making and growing and making um, things that it needs to survive. Okay, so it's inhibiting it's inhibiting it to survive. That's how an antibiotic works. But the issue is, so that's why it works against bacteria. But the issue is, it doesn't work against a virus because a virus is considered dead. A virus doesn't have um, um, uh, mitochondria, rough ER, or other organelles like bacteria and normal human cells. They don't have any organelles. And we know these organelles are used to synthesize these proteins that allow the bacteria to survive. So when antibiotics are given, it inhibits those processes. But since a bacteria doesn't have those processes, if you give antibiotics to a virus, it will be useless because there's no processes to block. So because the virus is technically already dead. Okay. Um, the also other good thing is you might ask, why do antibiotics not kill our own cells? Because they can kill bacteria, but why not our own cells? The reason is because antibiotics, um, we have a different membrane structure from bacteria. So these antibiotics function in a way to destroy specifically bacterial structures not human cell structures. So when you take antibiotics, you won't be killing your own cells. You will only be you you will essentially only be killing bacterial cells, which is great. Otherwise, you'll be harming yourself by taking antibiotics. So the key thing to remember is only bacteria can be killed by antibiotics, not viruses, because viruses are dead and don't have metabolic processes. Essentially, they don't have organelles to inhibit basically. Antibiotics are non-specific, so can be used for more than one type of bacteria at once. Okay, this is an easy point. So, as I mentioned here, these are specific. So, any antibody you, you isolate or take from the body, that antibody is made for one specific organism, one specific pathogen. It can't kill this pathogen now and then move to another one and kill another type of pathogen. It can only kill one type of pathogen. It can only kill these look these these um, the pathogens that look like this. Okay. And then another one can kill only organisms that look like this. So that's what I mean by specific. Now, antibiotics are non-specific, non, non-specific. Non and this means when you take, when you're infected by bacteria, um, say, say um, today you're infected by this bacteria, you can take antibiotics, right, to fight that bacteria. Now, say tomorrow you're infected by another type of bacteria. You can take the same bacteria as you did yesterday to fight this bacteria, um, to fight this bacteria. Antibiotics are non-specific, so they can they 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 work for all types of bacteria. You don't need a specific type of antibiotic for this bacteria and a specific type for that bacteria. That's what I mean by non-specific. So that's different from antibodies. Okay, last point here. Antibiotics don't bind antigens. They destroy cell wall and prevent cellular functions or metabolism of bacteria. We know that um, antibodies bind to the antigens and then destroy the, the pathogen through various mechanisms. Antibiotics don't bind to these antigens. They go into the cell and destroy its cellular functions, as I just mentioned. They inhibit the organelles from working. They inhibit the organelles from producing proteins that allow that, that uh, bacteria to survive. So that's another difference. They act, they kill through different mechanisms. One binds to the antigens. Antibiotics go rather go into the cells and destroy that way. Okay, so here is the final summary table that I made. Essentially, I cover just all this, all the same points that I, that I discussed above and compare them with each other. Um, hopefully, it all makes sense, and I hope that was useful.